Hi, I'm Julie and this is Ryan with Limitless Van. And today we are gonna talk about powering your van conversion. So we're gonna dig into our most frequently asked questions when it comes to electrical systems and the power in your van, including things like how much battery power do I need? And what are the charging methods I should use for my van conversion? And is there an easy system for DIYers? We're gonna dig into all of that today. Let's do it. So first question, this is a loaded one, it's big. How much battery power do I need? Yeah, that totally depends. So um, it depends completely on how you're using the van. It depends if you're gonna be close to shore power or not. It depends on if you're gonna go three day trips or month long trips. So a lot of that depends on your use case of the vehicle. So what I typically tell customers is, okay, are you gonna be traveling for three or more days? Um, are you going to be using an air conditioner? Are you gonna be using a microwave? Those are high power consumption items. If they say yes to any of those questions, then I'm gonna recommend a 10 kilowatt hour power package. And what that equates to in 12 volt is 800 amp hours of lithium. So um, while it sounds big, what that practically converts to is, okay, if I'm turning on the air conditioning at nighttime, that means if I have 100% at nighttime, I turn on my AC, by the morning time, my AC is gonna be able to run all night long. I'll be able to wake up and I'll still have 50, 60% battery power, which enables me to continue on my trip. So the next day starts, sun comes up, my solar power is charging, um, or I turn on the vehicle, the alternators, alternators charging my battery, and I'm able to replenish and be able to stay off grid longer. For the next night, I can turn on my AC. So that's typically what we're seeing. So this is the assumption that someone's off grid without access to shore power, for multiple days Correct. and that they are wanting to run their AC overnight. Yep, exactly. So if someone had shore power or yes. only needed their AC for a few hours a day, then they could potentially get by with a little bit less. Of course, they can get, get by with less. But I think it's also important to note that when we're talking about 10 kilowatt hours of battery, it allows people to go off grid without worry, right? Like it just gives them that peace of mind that they can run their AC, they can use their microwave and pop their popcorn, they can heat up their dinner and not worry about their battery power. Yeah. We're seeing more and more consumption with Starlink. People are using their internets a lot more. People are using their cell phones and all their devices they're, they're plugging in, the refrigerator. All of that kind of adds up and people are expecting more out of these vehicles. So it's getting more common to see larger power packages. So batteries store all this power, but now we need to talk about how we recharge these batteries. And potentially how we recharge them could also factor into how much battery power you need. Because if you have a quick charging method, then you're able to refill that, that power yeah. a little more quickly. So what are the charging methods that we recommend? Okay, so there's three main charging methods for a van. There's the solar power option, there's shore power, where, which is plug-in, and then there's secondary alternator charging. So those are the three main methods. In terms of um, how fast they are, depending on the type of alternator you have, the alternator secondary charging could be really fast, and then there's shore power, and then we kind of view um, solar panels as almost like a trickle charger. So how much solar power then do you recommend? So the minimum we start with is 200 watts of solar. The average and a good, the sweet spot really seems to be 400 watts of solar. So why I say 400 is a sweet spot is because it seems to maintain your battery capacity at, at or near 100% throughout the day. So if you're doing light use of the van, like your refrigerator, your lights, charging appliances, um, 400 watts seems to keep it capped off at 100% during sunny days, of course. 200 watts, it just helps reduce the rate of discharge on your batteries. And of course, if you can get more than 400 watts on your roof deck, that's great, but you're kind of limited by space on your roof deck. So you might have a max air fan or your nomadic or air conditioner up top. And well. it depends on the size of your vehicle because a 144 Sprinter or 148 Transit yeah. can hold less than a 170 Sprinter or the extended length Transit. Yep. So the other thing I think to factor in is where your vehicle is parked, right? Because whether you are in direct sunlight or shade, and typically we would recommend, if possible, parking in the shade. Yeah. But then it's decreasing the solar yeah. charging. So realistically, there are limitations to solar um, which is why I'm always cautious to saying, yeah, put a thousand watts of solar on your roof deck. Parking in the shade, um, the time of year. So winter time, especially in the Pacific Northwest, you get a lot of clouds, you don't get efficient solar. Um, also the sun isn't as high in the sky, so you're gonna have a decreased rate of solar. 
um, even in summertime, you're going to see less efficiency because your solar panels are going to be heated. Really hot solar panels are not as efficient as if it was a sunny day and 50 degrees. Also, you only have about five hours of the day, even in peak solar season, where you're going to be bringing in your full wattage of solar. So you have to consider that as well. So earlier when you were talking about charging methods, you mentioned DC to DC charging or a secondary alternator. What would you recommend and why? What we use is a secondary alternator from Nations in conjunction with a wake speed regulator. What DC to DC charging is, is it basically takes the power that the engine produces, the van chassis engine, and it transfers that power and stores it in our back of house batteries. And that produces the fastest rate of um, recharging your batteries that we have available to us. So can you give an example of just how fast it might recharge your batteries? Yeah, so typically with shore power, you're seeing maybe 2,000, 2,200 watts of power coming in from shore power, um, which is typically the fastest way to recharge your batteries. Um, with a nation's alternator, with our 48 volt system and the wake speed regulator, we're seeing almost um, one and a half to two times that rate. So it's an extremely efficient, quick, quick filling recharge system. Okay, I've also heard you talk about auto start and high idle kits. Can you tell us what that has to do with all of this? Um, if you have a Mercedes, it's a mid-city engineering auto start and high idle kit. If you have a transit, it's an intermotive auto start and high idle kit. So what an auto start does is if you're sleeping at night, you're using your air conditioner and your battery power gets below a preset point, so let's say 25%, your vehicle will automatically turn on and it will recharge using your secondary alternator, your back of house batteries. The other good thing about an auto start system is you'll, you'll be able to detect if your vehicle's batteries are also below voltage and your vehicle will automatically turn on as well. So it's a really good safety mechanism when you're camping out in the wilderness. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, the other aspect to this is a high idle kit. So uh, especially with the Ford Transits, if you turn your vehicle on at idle, it's not enough power, it's not generating enough RPM to turn on your secondary alternator to charge your back of house batteries. So a high idle kit, what ha happens is at idle, when you turn your vehicle on, it'll raise your idle to about 900 to 1000 RPMs. So you'll be able to recharge your battery um, at a much faster rate. Now one question we get asked a lot is Ford Transits and Mercedes Sprinters, they come with the option for a secondary alternator from the factory, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people think this is a wonderful option. What are your thoughts on that? I'd say bypass that option. Um, if the only van you can find is one with a secondary alternator from the factory, go ahead and get it. We have to remove it anyways. So what those secondary alternators from the factory are, are those are more for upfitters who are putting an ambulance kit on it, um, where they're gonna be using high powered items at idle. Um, they're also very specific to an AGM battery. Our alternators are programmed and designed for the battery that we use. Um, whether it's Victron or Lithionics, they get programmed specifically to that battery. So not worth the upgrade at all. Okay, so one thing that you mentioned is that we currently use a 48 volt system, but when Limitless Fan started four years ago, we were using a 12 volt system and then we transitioned to 24 volt and now here we're at 48 volt. So can you explain what the difference is between the voltage systems and what you recommend and why, or if it even matters? Yeah. So there's quality at 12, 24 and 48 for sure. We progressed from 12 to 24 a few years back, mainly because the battery size. So that was the main issue for us is if you wanted to get 10 kilowatt hours or 800 amp hours of lithium battery, Picture in 12 volt, eight 100 amp hour batteries. That's a massive amount of weight and space taken. When we were able to move to 24 volt, we just had to use two 200 amp hour 24 volt batteries. And that produced the same amount of power as the eight 100 amp hour batteries. So that was a no brainer for us. We then moved to 48 volt. The main reason for that is because the wires now are going to be reduced in size by half. And it may sound small, but it reduces a lot in cost and it reduces a lot in weight because we have wires running 25 feet two different times from your van engine all the way back to your battery box. So that's a lot of wire that's reduced in weight. Um, and lastly, 
the main reason and the one I'm most excited about is the new alternator. So we're able to put a much more powerful alternator in with our 48 volt system, which doubles the speed of alternator charging from our previous 24 volt system. So we're excited about that. Okay, so you're saying that for most band conversions, we're recommending 10 kilowatt hours. Yes. That comes with a pretty hefty price tag, yeah. right? Because that's yeah. a lot of battery power. So could someone opt for a lower, smaller battery package and then add more battery power later if they needed it? Yeah, it's kind of a tricky question. You could do that, but it comes with some serious caveats. Number one is if you add another battery to a previous, previously used battery, you're gonna have batteries discharging at different rates. And batteries discharging at different rates are not gonna last as long. And with some battery manufacturers, if you do that, you void the warranty on both batteries. So that'd be something you'd wanna look into. Um, what you would want to do the right way is to add, at a later point, be prepared to add two new batteries at the same time, replacing your old battery. Also, what you're gonna to have to look into is what's the feasibility of adding another battery in terms of how big is your battery box? Is there gonna be rewiring you're, you're gonna to have to do, larger wires? So there's, there's a lot of thinking that has to go through it. It's possible, but it's not necessarily easy or cheap. So this is very technical, right? In van power systems, there's a lot of components that all tie together. If someone's a DIYer and this is just over their heads, is there an easy plug and play option for them? Yeah, thank goodness there is. And more recently, some really good options have become available. Check out the EcoFlow kits. Those are really nice. They're now able to adapt to DC to DC charging as well. Uh, there's also options from uh, Blue Eddy and Goal Zero, all really nice options. Another one that I really like and recommend is um, contracting with Artec, a company that's able to do battery box designs. They'll design from everything from your inverter charger, your battery package, your regulators and from, for your wake speed, solar. They'll take care of everything for you and they'll put it in a box. You can take that box and install it in your van. So they'll take care of all the really difficult technical work for you. So that's a nice option as well. So we know this is a lot of information. We are gonna include some links like to our tech and to our blog, how much power do I really need? That gives you all of this broken down written form. We'll put that in the description. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and subscribe, like this video. We are gonna come out with more van content and just helpful tips and tricks as you do your van build. Thank you.